Hello friends, hope that you are keeping well. Lots of tech and telco stuff going on in Australia this week, so much so that we had to split them out into a few episodes. Welcome to the Dirt Report, home of Aussie tech and telco news. We have some great stories for you today, so stay tuned and you can do that by tapping the subscribe button and smashing that like button on this video if you didn't like it. Also, if you want online privacy, American, French and Japanese Netflix to watch overseas sports streams, then check out ExpressVPN. You can get three months free when choosing the annual plan with a special link below. And of course, it helps to support this channel. So in today's episode, we have ACCC media law delayed, but not dead. Huawei going strong, Adelaide's 10 gigabit access is done, and NB Co bandwidth limits. Let's roll the intro. It's been quiet since the announcement of the mandatory media code. Even Google's campaigns have slowed. Maybe they ran out of AdWords credit, who knows? There has been some whispers that some media outlets have already made deals under the table with social media and search giants, but that doesn't mean the catalyst that started it all is gone. No, 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 no. ACCC chairman Rod Sims said we're still in the ring. While there has been some delays in getting the legislation to before parliament, it has nothing to do with the calls to stop it at all. He said the delay is caused by the national budget and amongst the human malware pandemics, it's certainly busy times. Now, amongst all that, there are a few other things brewing in the media landscape. And Rod Sims, and while EA Games still hasn't added him as a playable character in The Sims, it had Kevin Rudd having a go of his own on an internet petition. Over 377,000 people have signed his petition for a royal commission into Murdoch's media empire. And the ACCC's Rod Sims has come out and said they'll be keeping a close eye on News Corp. In among said announcements, Sims also said that arbitration between a media outlet and someone like Google or Facebook is not yet settled. Ironic, I know, but it's a very important part of the media code. Without this, it will fall flat on its head in front of parliament. And that brings me to the thought that it's not the budget that had delayed this reaching the parliament, it's actually the fact that they just not finished the work and it won't work just yet. After all, it's a great idea in theory, and in history there has been many great ideas on paper that don't really work out well in practice. In fact, some have led to revolutions. Sims also said that the media landscape is more diverse than ever. It may mean that the Pecker and Murdoch era has some competition. So I hope Sims also realizes the new media code may potentially mute a lot of smaller voices in the media sphere. I'll be hoping to keep you guys updated about what happens with this new media law. Let me know your thoughts below. Let's move on to our next topics. Next up, we have some Huawei news and things are looking pretty darn good for them, which is a surprise, especially due to the amount of Western countries banning Huawei hardware in new 5G deployments and other infrastructure projects. I hope you all like the way I'm saying Huawei. <laughs> the Chinese telecommunication equipment vendor has seen revenues of 140.6 billion Australian dollars in the first nine months of 2020, which is something that they haven't seen in a long time and they announced it is almost 10% more than the year before. So instead of deploying 5G towers, Huawei has been selling 5G mobile phones and increased their revenue has come from just the mobile arm. And it's not hard to see why. There are yet to be any Huawei 5G mobiles available in our local mobile stores, such as you know, Vodafone, Telstra, Optus, but they certainly have devices available online that you can buy right now. Companies like Samsung, Google, and OnePlus make premium handsets that used to be alternatives to the overly expensive iPhones. Now they are one in the same. In fact, some, especially from Samsung's side, are even more expensive. So it's no surprise when a manufacturer like Huawei sells mobile phones at similar specs using the same software as the others at lower prices. Some models I would like to add look and perform better than their competitors, which are two times more expensive. You see, with Android phones, people are used to lower prices, getting more for your dollar. And while Samsung continues to chase that big premium market, other Chinese mobile makers are taking low to mid market. And the mid is starting to feel pretty darn premium. Now, on the other hand, there is no particularly big news about how their 5G tower hardware arm is going. Let me know below if you have any consideration in buying a 5G phone and what brand. Has Apple's announcement of the iPhone 12's 5G actually made it a reality? Let me know below. Let's move on to our next story. And in good news for Adelaide, 10 gigabit fiber upgrades have been completed. Back in December 2017, TPG was selected to roll out 10 gigabit fiber access to 1,000 buildings in the CBD, consisting of 82 kilometers of fiber optic circuits, 26,000 splices, 431 new joints, and 88 density core sites. 
a pretty monumental project that is extremely difficult when you're working in heavenly built up areas. Lord Mayor Sandy Vershaw said connecting the 1000th building was done on time and on budget. In Vershaw's view, this will hopefully be a completing factor in attracting big businesses from overseas and interstate. Many businesses today require fast digital infrastructure and businesses that need that are also making bank. So the City of Adelaide Council is hoping for a big influx of business that will hopefully bring positive return on investment from this project. Vershaw said that Landmark Projects is the first of its kind in Australia, represents a significant strategic commitment by the City of Adelaide to provide our city businesses with world-class digital infrastructure that will help create jobs and boost our economy. So well done to the City of Adelaide, a great move to future-proofing your city for success. Let me know your thoughts below. Finally, our last story. It's all about NB Co and their new scheme. Yes, that's right, another damn scheme. In amongst the likes of Netflix tax and the CVC, this is by far the most ridiculous thing NB Co has yet to come up with. Uh, sort of. Apparently, there are some heavy users, you know who you are, who are breaching NBN's fair use. Remember when the lady breached Aussie's broadband's fair use policy? Well, imagine how much internet the heavy users have to be using when NBN Co comes out and calls them heavy users in breach of fair use. So NBN Co is looking to throttle certain types of traffic during busy times. First off, it's a bit ridiculous that NBN Co is getting all up in arms about this. And second of all, it's effing censorship. And some of you may not care about that because it's only potentially happening on fixed wireless networks. All right, I might be getting ahead of myself or maybe not. So what's actually going on? Well, NBN Co is looking at proposals to limit the bandwidth of certain traffic types on their network. This includes peer-to-peer -peer software and software patches and game patches and updates to other softwares, VPN traffic, ultra high definition videos, all during busy times. In the past, during the ADSL era, ISPs had done similar things. And that was understandable because they were not a government entity and in both cases, more of a technology limitation too. In a statement, NBGO said they have found some users continually hammering their towers with digital hammers. And that 1.65% of users accounted for the use of 18.5% of total uplink capacity, which is nothing to laugh at, but nonetheless, I laughed a little bit. According to IT News site, the biggest offender is peer-to-peer. -peer. And here is the expected speed you will get during busy times for each type. And it's pretty painful to see. The main problem I see here is what happens to VPN software and game updates? Like I understand peer-to-peer -peer isn't always even legal, but the rest are fully legal and also kind of required in today's day and age. With some software as a service models, many software systems and video games require updates. Otherwise, they will not let you even launch the program without first doing that update. Imagine having to update at that speed. Imagine needing to do something really quickly and the update itself is already wasting your time and then your internet will be throttled. It may not be censorship, but it's certainly a stupid inconvenience. NBN Co has invited RSPs to comment until December 3rd, but they will do whatever they want. I can't remember the last time RSPs commented on something got their way. Let me know your thoughts below. Are these ridiculous? Should it just be peer-to-peer -peer that's throttled or anything at all? So on that bombshell, I bid you goodbye. Make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more and support this channel. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.